In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you several different techniques for animating photographs in motion. If you've never used motion before, don't worry. I'll walk you through everything you need to know. Let's get started. I've launched motion, and my goal is to put my photo animation into an HD video project in Final Cut Pro 10. So I'll choose the default motion project type and the broadcast 1080 preset at 29.97 frames per second. I'll set the duration to 30 seconds so we have plenty of time. Let's click Open. Next, I'll press Command-I to import and navigate to the location of my photo. This photo I've named Football Players is from the Library of Congress's Free to Use and Reuse collection and is included with this tutorial. I'll click Import. Now to create a Ken Burns type of pan and scan animation, you could animate the scale and position of this photo layer with keyframes, and you could adjust the interpolation of those keyframes to create smooth movement. But I'd like to show you what I consider a better way. First, I'll set my starting framing by holding down the Shift and Option keys and dragging a corner bounding box handle to scale up the image while keeping it centered and maintaining the aspect ratio. Then I'll drag on it to reposition it. Let's say I want to start on this player down near the ground. Note I can also go to the Inspector, to the Properties tab, to adjust the scalar position. Next, I'll click the Behaviors Shortcut button and choose Basic Motion, Move. Then I'll move my playhead to the end of the project. You can drag it or press the End key on your keyboard, or on a laptop press Function Right Arrow. Doing so recenters the photo because by default, the move behavior sets the position back to 0, 0. Now I'll drag on the green and red arrows on the on-screen control to adjust my framing. I can also drag inside the circle to adjust X and Y at the same time. Dragging on the blue arrow that's pointing at us moves the image in Z space, essentially scaling it up or down. If I scrub through the project, we can see that the photo now animates. But it takes the full 30 seconds to do so, so let's trim the move behavior so it starts after a few seconds and doesn't last as long. In the Behaviors Inspector, let's also change the speed from constant to ease both for a smooth start and stop. And let's play that back. Very nice. This is why I love the move behavior. It's so easy to change the duration of the move by trimming it, or when the move happens by sliding it, or change the ending framing by simply dragging in the canvas when the playhead is anywhere after the end of the behavior. No need to park on or select keyframes. Now let's say there's a fairly long voiceover that will be running under this photo animation. By the way, you could of course import an audio file into motion to match the timing. Or once exported and imported into Final Cut Pro, you can retime this move in Final Cut by adjusting the speed or using blade speed to adjust the speed at different points in time. So let's add another move behavior to zoom out to reveal the full photo. Instead of adding a brand new one, I'll right click on this one and choose Duplicate. Then I'll drag that copy down the timeline, allowing for a space between the two. If I scrub over it, nothing happens yet, so in the inspector, I'll reset the position parameter to recenter the photo. Then I'll click the disclosure triangle to reveal the Z parameter and drag in the value field to move the photo back. I could also drag the blue Z arrow in the canvas. I don't need to change the speed since we started with a copy. I'll click in an empty part of the Layers tab to deselect the move behavior so we don't see the on-screen control, and play that back. I can see at the top left of the canvas that I'm playing back at full frame rate, so I know this is how it will look when exported. If you aren't getting full frame rate playback on your computer, you can either go to the Render pop-up menu and change the resolution and quality settings. Or 
you can go to the Mark menu and choose RAM Preview, Play Range, or press Command R. Let's save this project by pressing Command S, select a location, and a name, and save. Once you're happy with the placement and timing of remove behaviors, you can export a movie by clicking the Share button and choosing Export Movie. In the Settings tab, I'll choose Video Only, set the codec to ProRes 422, click Next, choose a location, and save. Once it's rendered, it opens in QuickTime Player and we can play it. From here, we can import this movie into our Final Cut Pro project. By the way, if you enjoyed this, I just released a new one-hour tutorial called Making Photos Come Alive, where I'll teach you how to separate your photos into layers so that they can be animated in 3D space, and how to create a 3D environment out of your photos for more depth and realism. And if you really want to take your photo animations up a notch, I'll also show you how you can make the figures in your photos seem to come alive with organic movements using a plugin called mPuppet. And right now, you can get this tutorial for 30% off using the link in the code below. Thanks for watching.